Shabbat Shalom. This is Larry Mitchell with Friends of Israel. We are continuing our verse-by-verse -verse study through the Apocalypse, the revelation of Jesus Christ. This morning we are looking at one verse, Revelation 17, verse 6. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Question arises, who is the chief persecutor of the saints? When John wrote the Apocalypse, it was Rome. Christians were being fed to the lions, burnt as human tortures. According to Dallas Baptist University, ancient Rome murdered about 7 million Christians. Sadly, more Christians and Jews have been murdered by the Roman Catholic Church than were murdered by pagan Rome. Multitudes were tortured and killed by the Inquisition. A quote from an anonymous Catholic said, It would be better to be an atheist than to believe in the God of the Inquisition. The Inquisition was established by the Roman Catholic Church to weed out heretics. At first, it was focused on Christians and Jews, especially those who dared to believe what was written in the Bible rather than the traditions taught by Roman Catholicism. The Inquisition used the cruelest of tortures in order to force confession from their victims. The following quotes and photographs are taken from the Museum of the Inquisition in Granada, Spain. Please accept my apologies for the graphic photos and descriptions of the tortures employed, but I believe it's important for Christians to understand just how evil and wicked the Inquisition really was. We see this picture of torture on the wheel. Quote, used for extremely serious crimes. The prisoner naked was placed on the ground with the wheel and using a club, all his joints and bones were fractured one by one, including the hips and shoulders. The prisoner was then tied to the wheel in an unseemly position and raised on top of a post. He was given food and drink until the birds and his injuries put an end to his agony. This was one of the favorite spectacles of the people, judging by the amount of pictures conserved depicting the expectant public. It was commonly used in Germany and France up to the 18th century. The bull of Phalaris. The marked victim was enclosed in a metal statue of a bull. A fire was lighted under the bull until its wall glowed with incandescent heat. The shrieks and the moans of the victim issued from the bull's nostrils and made it seem to bellow. They used carpenter's tools as seen in this picture. The presence of this working tool in every household made it an easy step to transform it into an instrument of torture with an extremely widespread use. The victim was hung upside down would begin to be sawn between the legs. The position meant that the loss of blood was relatively slight, which made the suffering last longer. Given the devastating consequences of its use, it must be considered more of an instrument of death rather than one of torture due to the enormous loss of blood and the splitting of the diaphragm. It was often used against homosexuals of both sexes and of witches. Mutation. The removal and or destruction of every part of the human body are an ancient form of punishment which, has, which have practices in all times in all places in every society. Noses, ears, lips, fingers, and toes were cut off, crushed or burned as the first degree of severity. In the second degree, hands, feet, and breasts were cut off. In the third degree, testicles, penis, arms, legs, and eyes. Also, the cutting of the flesh into slices like salami, cutting off the eyelids, and cutting of tendons were common practice until the turn of the 18th century. An iron chopping knife was used to cut off hands and feet. A stock with hollow top was used to crush the fingers and toes of victims by hitting wood or iron wedge with a hammer. Well, you might find this surprising that this was practiced by a society claiming to be a church because Jesus said in Matthew 5, 43 to 44, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. 
But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. The Roman Catholic Church actually defends the murder and torture of their victims by arguing that suffering endured at the hands of the Inquisition would shorten the time and severity of suffering in purgatory. To the quote, purgatory defined from the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, the place of temporary punishment where the souls of those who die in a state of grace must be cleansed for the entrance into heaven if their love for God is not yet perfect. Quote from The Story of Civilization, William Durant, Inquisitors appear to have sincerely believed that torture was a favor to a defendant already accounted guilty, since it might earn him, by confession, a slighter penalty than otherwise. Even if he should, after confession, be condemned to death, he, should, he could enjoy priestly absol absolution to save him from hell. The Master Key to Popery by Antonio Gavin says this, the Roman Catholics believe there is a purgatory and the souls suffer more pains in it than in hell. But I think the Inquisition is the only purgatory on earth and the Holy Fathers, the priests and popes are judges and executioners in it. The doctrine of purgatory is not mentioned, is not even hinted at in the Bible. The Bible teaches that Jesus' death on the cross is all sufficient to pay for our sins. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. John 19, 30, When Jesus therefore received up the vinegar, he said, It is finished, or paid in full, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What worldwide religion is responsible for the murder of the saints? Dave Hunt gives us the answer. And this is an excerpt from A Woman Rides the Beast. The victims of the Inquisition exceeded by hundreds of thousands the number of Christians and Jews who suffered under pagan Roman emperors. The Inquisition established and repeatedly blessed by the popes was an open assault upon truth and justice and basic human rights. It was a perfect setup for bigots, villains, villains, enemies, crazies, with overworked imagination to seek revenge, wrench themselves of, of arrival or gain personal satisfaction of having become important to, to the church. The property of heretics was confiscated and divided between the inquisitors and the popes. In 680, the Sixth General Council decreed that even dead heretics should be tried and condemned. Corpses that laid in the grave for decades were dug up, tried, and found guilty. At that point, past assets of the deceased were confiscated, causing heirs to lose everything, including in many cases, all civil rights. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw, saw the woman, Babylon mystery religion, drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Who is that who has been responsible for the murder of the saints? I think if you look at history, you come to the conclusion, it was Rome. Shabbat Shalom, this is Larry Mitchell.